So, back for week six of the XDL and with the team builder for against Ashton Cox and the Ohio Ho-Ohs. So now I do have access to my full change team. Uh, I had four trades for the week five and now I have four extra trades. So this is now officially my team uh, going forward. I do have one trade left available to me if I wanted to make that. But for now, this is uh, the team I'm going forward with for the rest of the weeks. So to see Ashton's team there on the right. And this is going to be the team that I'm bringing for that. So we've got Coco against Tapafini, but I have a Marowak, so I should be fine. Even though I'm not bringing Lightning Rods, because I'm disrespecting that type of Coco uh, just a little bit here. Um, I'm not really intending to bring Marowak anyway, uh, because it is mainly there for the bluff. And I don't want it Lightning Rodding away my circuitry, because I'm not running Discharge this week. So... Uh, I don't want to be lightning rodding that away, and I don't even think the Tapu Koko will come because I've got a Marowak, I've got a Nido Queen. I should be sorted against the Koko. I don't think it's going to be a very good bring. And even if he did bring it, it would surely be something like Screens or Nature's Madness, so it would just get around the lightning rod regardless. So, uh, disrespecting just a little bit there, but don't want to get in the way of my own Zerg Tree because uh, I think my Zerg Tree is pretty good this week. So, let me go in for just Shadow Bone over Polti uh, Geist. That's the Pokemon. Poltergeist. Uh, because uh, if I want to hit something like the Latias and its weakness policy and they've activated that, then Poltergeist is going to be useless. And Shadow Bone with that attack investment is enough to Oko even a 252 HP Latias as well. So uh, don't feel the need for the Poltergeist there. I could run something like Bone Rang to hit the Regirock a bit better, but then that's just going to activate the weakness policy. So I'm not even going to bother with that. The Marowak probably isn't coming regardless, and it's not supposed to beat the Regirock. So uh, if, it, if it does, it's by Perish Song because... Um, that's going to be a potential end game for me. If I have brought this Marowak and I'd be able to KO two Pokemon, while I still have enough left, I can go for Perish Song. Uh, it's got enough of speed investment there, so I can outspeed a, a neutral speed, uh, max speed Celesteer at minus one. Uh, and also, probably, hopefully, speed creep the Regirock, depending on how much of a speed creep uh, Ashton has gone for for his own Regirock there. So I could potentially go for the Perish Song before the Regirock gets off its Rockfall into the Marowak, and it's got enough special defense so that it can survive a uh, Life Orb max move from the Latias, so that I would be able to survive and respond back with the Shadow Bone, but probably not bringing the Marowak, so um, not too concerned about this one. Uh, I am bringing the Nidoqueen Queen though. Nidoqueen Queen is very good in this week, because uh, it's very good against the Regirock. It can Oko Regirock, uh, not in the Dynamax, but just regular Regirock with that amount of uh, special attack investment with the Life Orb Earth Power. Got Ice Beam as the coverage. I don't need Sludge Bomb this week at all. Earth Power hits pretty much everything, and uh, the only two things that it doesn't hit would be the Celesteela, which is hit neutrally, and I can't. I don't think I need to run Flamethrower, given that I have uh, Zerg Tree and I have Marowak, so Celesteela may not even be coming. Ice Beam hits it neutrally, and the Latias uh, is immune to the Earth Power as well, but is weak to the Ice Beam. I was considering Shadow Ball, just as a slightly better way of hitting Kofa Grigus that still hits Latias super effectively and Celesteela neutrally, but then the increase in damage is actually pretty negligible compared to Stab Earth Power, so went for Ice Beam for the slightly stronger strength. And I've got Taunt here for the Kofa Grigus as well, just to stop any Trick Rooms, because one of the potential leads uh, that I'm planning on is Weavile Nido Queen. That would give me access to just go for Fake Out Taunt if I need to. Only Mental Herb on Kofa Grigus would be bad in that case, and it would be pretty bad, but uh, we'll have to deal with that when we get to it. Uh, because I didn't really need any coverage. Like I said, I didn't really want Flamethrower or Thunderbolt. I don't think I need to be respecting Celestia with Nido Queen as much, considering I have something like Circuitry. Uh, that is almost certainly going to be my max Pokemon as well. So I said that for the last week, and then I Dynamaxed Articuno and managed to win. So uh, there we go. But pretty straightforward Nido Queen. It's got enough speeds. Uh, only to outspeed Latias at minus one. I didn't go for outspeeding. Uh, max max speed Celesteela because I didn't feel the need for that with Nido Queen because like I said I've got circuitry uh, to be able to deal with that and Marowak to an extent as well. So I've got this Tapu Fini here uh, that is going to be a pretty supportive one. I'm going for Brine to pair with the Nature's Madness because I wanted Nature's Madness so that I could put things in range of all my other Pokemon because everything except for Weavile underspeeds this Tapu Fini uh, so that I can always go for Nature's Madness and attack and probably get KOs. And then Brine pairs really well with Nature's Madness as well because I'm not going for Calm Minds or anything so I'm not getting any increased special attack. And Scald's going to do almost nothing especially since I almost certainly can't burn unless he switches in his own Tapu Koko or I'm going for one of the Pokemon off the ground but I don't really care about burning so see your last yes. Uh, so Brian works pretty well with uh, Nature's Madness, and it is going to be just a supportive Tapu Fini. This is another potential lead that I can go for. Tapu Fini and something, probably protect Icy Wind, and then just go from there. Nature's Madness spam while I do strong attacks. I've got Heal Pulse as well, because uh, I have ways of bulking up my Pokemon, so uh, being able to just Heal Pulse and get them back 
uh, to a good amount of HP could be could be very useful here. Uh, was considering something like Moonblast to be able to hit the Latias a bit better, to hit him on top a bit better, uh, but I decided that I'll just Nature's Madness them and then just Icy Wind instead, uh, because the point of this Tapu Fini is really just to support, get the speed control going, get the other Pokemon nice and healthy, so... Didn't feel the need to go offensive, especially because I went for a much bulkier move spread. Because, like I said, it, I wanted it to outspeed all my Pokemon except Weavile, because that couldn't happen. Uh, so I went for that much speed, and then what was left over... Um, I am respecting Silvalli a bit with this, so the EVs are supposed to survive a Grass-type multi-attack from a Grass-type Silvalli. Uh, most of the time, because of the speed, I couldn't get it to be guaranteed, uh, while still being able to survive... A Life Orb Grass move, I think from, was it from Solar Beam or from Energy Ball from Latias? Uh, from Life Orb Latias, so um, Tapu Coco can Oko this Tapu Fini, but nothing else can, theoretically. So, uh, and like I said, I'm disrespecting Tapu Coco because I don't think it should even come to the match. Uh, so, uh, that's enough uh, uh, defensive investment, I think. So, Tapu Fini should be able to survive anything. If I lead into something, I can just go for Protect Icy Wind and theoretically be able to get that Icy Wind off and then be sorted, because I can just go for Nature's Mana Spam after that. So, uh, that's the plan with the Tapu Fini. Weavile is the, another, uh, like I said, the paired with the Nida Queen lead, because one of the nice things about Weavile in Draft League is, is I'm always going to have the fastest fake out. If I'm facing down opposing fake out, I'll always be able to choose to have the fastest fake out. Um... Against him on top, that was very easy to be able to do that. Uh, but the speed is to outspeed the Latias there. Because uh, that's the fastest thing you can outspeed. There's no point going for Tapu Koko. Uh, because it would just be EV to out outspeed Weavile. You would assume if it is even coming. Uh, and I needed the triple axle to be able to get the, the uh, Oko on Latias. Throat, sh throat Shot wasn't strong enough. Even Black Glass's Throat Shot wasn't strong enough. If they've got some bulk in the Latias. So went for Wide Lens, uh, Triple Axle instead. Because I am a coward. I'm not clicking Triple, a triple Axle without a Wide Lens. 72% uh, accuracy is rubbish. Like, that's close to focus blast levels, so I'm not dealing with that if I can just put the item on and pretty much not ever miss my triple axle. It also means my icy winds are 100% accurate, so if I want to start just spamming icy winds, I don't have to worry about that 5% chance to miss either. And Throat Shop is there mainly for that Entei, because I'm expecting that one of the ways to deal with the Zerk Tree is to start spamming Snarls with the Entei, and then I would want to Throat Shop the Entei so it can't Snarl my Zerk Tree. Uh, because I was considering having White Herb on the Zerg Tree, mainly for that, in case they wanted to go for Snarl Spam or Mystical Fire on the Latias to be able to reduce it down. But instead, I've gone for uh, Electric Seed here. Instead, like I said, I don't expect the Tapu Tap Coco to be coming. If it does, wonderful. That's a free activation of the Electric Seed. But Zerg Tree can activate the Electric Seed itself. Because, like I said, I am planning to Dynamax the Zerg Tree here in this match. So if I go for a Max Lightning, I set the terrain myself and give myself an Electric Seed boost. Uh, so that's going to help bulk out this Zerk Tree quite a lot. I am still a little bit torn between Energy Ball and Calm Mind because in my mind there should be either a Silvalli Ground or Grass on his team, else Zerk Tree is going to have a good time. So Grass is, is resisting and hits Tapafini pretty well, so Grass is reasonable. Uh, but if it is Ground, then I probably want Energy Ball to be able to hit that Silvalli. But at the same time, I could just Starfall it, so um, it could be either Energy Ball or Calm Mind going into the game. So uh, I am still undecided at the moment, and I've still got a few hours to decide. But it's either going to be Energy Ball or Calm Mind, depending on how much uh, I'm expecting the Silver Ally grounds. But I am expecting Silver Ally, so uh, I feel like that does need to come to respect the Zerk Tree, maybe respect the Tapu Fini as well uh, by being a Grass type. Because if you've got the Tapu Coco there and that's shut down completely by the Marowak, then what else do you have for the Tapu Fini? So uh, I think the Silver Ally, uh, maybe even Electric as well, but that would resist the um, Electric as well on the Zerk Tree, but then wouldn't be able to hit it back uh, with uh, at least a neutral multi-attack. So uh, respecting the Silver Ally a little bit, but may go Calm Mind, especially with the Electric Seed. Because like I said, with the Heal Pulse on the Tapu Fini, if I get a Calm Mind, if I get an Electric Seed, you then Ashton may not be able to break through uh, this Zerka tree very well, or at least like quickly enough with the heal pulse spam. So, don't know at the moment. It's probably Calm Mind, I think. I'm leaning a bit more towards Calm Mind at this point, but it could be Energy Ball. Uh, we will see. And then the final one is going to be the Zapdos. Uh, I don't care about the speed tie with Entei. I'm not wasting all those EVs just to lose a speed tie uh, with the Entei. So, not going to even bother with that. I'm not going to bother outspeeding the Reggie Drago because I have Tapu Fini. If he brings Reggie Drago, then. You know, there's a Tapu Fini right there. So, should be fine in that regard. And then, uh, apart from that, like, Silvalli, I guess. But then, uh, because I'm expecting either Ground or Grass, then Zapdos shouldn't care about that. So, 
Uh, going for a pretty slow, pretty bulky one, and then that lets me underspeed my Tapu Fini as well, uh, without like super speed investment from the Tapu Fini. So it saves speed EVs on the Tapu Fini and the Zapdos as well, which allows me to bulk both of them out even further. Uh, so I'm going to be able to be nice and bulky here. Could potentially Dynamax this Zapdos. I'm probably only going to Dynamax the Zapdos if it's got its weakness policy boost. Uh, that can come from uh, like protecting on a Max Mindstorm uh, from the Latias. If I go for like Protect Icy Wind and they Max Mindstorm through my Protect to be able to activate it, then potentially I could go for another Icy Wind and a Max Airstream, and that should KO the, even the Dynamax Latias at that point. I'm going for Thunderous Kick here because I want to try and bulk up uh, with the Zapdos to like increase my defenses, and I don't want to just decrease them back down again. I know I can't Thunderous Kick, um, Defense Drop, the Regirock because of the clear body, but close combat is still only just about two-shotting the Regirock. And then if I'm decreasing my defenses, then Regirock could actually respond back with a strong enough move. Um, so, going to be with the, the Thunderous Kick here, uh, so that I don't have both attacks having a downside, whether that's Brave Bird reducing my HP so I'm less bulky, or close combat reducing my defenses so I'm less bulky. Uh, so, just going to be relying on the Thunderous Kick here instead, even though I can't drop the defenses, but... Uh, that should be fine. This um, this investment uh, for speed is just to un like outspeed the um, Celesteela still, max speed Celesteela, while still just underspeeding the Tapu Fini. Uh, I've just gone max HP to make the most of, if I Dynamax it and then just max attack. There's no real um, benchmark it hits for the special defense, because it already survived max Mindstorm Life Orb from... Um, was it Life Orb? It was definitely max Mindstorm something from the Latias if I go for Dynamax, so... Um, should be fine in that regard. So, yeah, that's going to be the, the team I'm going to be bringing for uh, week, week six at this point for the XDL. So, I'm um, looking forward to the match.